Let's talk about transpose of a linear transformation. So suppose I have vector spaces V and W and a linear transformation between them. Let's call it T. Now, if these are vector spaces over a field F, then uh, suppose I have a linear functional. So this is a map from W to F. Let's call it G. That means I could take the composition and get a map that's also linear, right? It's a linear functional from V to F. So this is just going to be G of T, so G composed with T. Now this is called T transpose of G. And so T transpose, interpreted in this way, can be seen as the following. For any linear functional on W, so an element of W star, it's going to output a functional on V. So that's an element of V star. So T transpose is going to give you a map from the dual space of W to the dual space of V. And this is called the transpose of T. Now this map um, is a linear transformation. And so let's check that. We'll have to take a scalar C and F and G, two functionals in, in W star, right, in the dual space of W. And I need to compute T transpose of CF plus G and make sure that I get the right thing out. And so by definition, this is just CF plus G composed with T, which is CF composed with T plus G composed with T. But that's just C times the composition F of T plus G composed with T, which again by definition is just C times T transpose of F plus T transpose of G. And so thus, uh, T transpose does give you a linear transformation on the dual spaces. But notice, it swaps the order, right? So if T is a linear transformation from V to W, T transpose is from W star to V star. And so we've already seen another use of this word transpose. And so how is this transpose related to the transpose of a matrix? So here's the, the theorem. So suppose V and W are finite dimensional vector spaces with given bases B and C respectively. So remember, if I have finite dimensional vector spaces and I pick a, a basis for each one, I can identify the space of linear transformations with the space of uh, matrices. Right? And this is going to give us the relationship we want. So suppose T is a linear transformation from V to W. And B star and C star, I'm going to take these to be the dual bases to B and C, respectively. Right? So these are composed of the coordinate uh, functions. So then the claim is that if I look at T transpose, that linear transformation, and I look at the standard matrix, the matrix representation for that linear transformation relative to C star and B star, this is exactly equal to the transpose of the matrix representation of the linear map T relative to bases B and C. Okay, So it relates the transpose linear transformation and the transpose of the matrix representation. So let's try to prove that. What would the proof look like? So I'm going to give my vectors in bases B and C some names. So I'll let B be V1, V2, up to Vn. And C is going to be W1, W2, up to Wm. Then the matrix representation of the map T is just this matrix Aij, where T of Vj is A1j W1 plus A2j W2 plus, and so on, all the way up to Amj Wm. And I have my coordinate functionals, B star is F1, F2, up to Fn, and C star is G1, G2, up to Gm. And we want to show that T transpose evaluated at Gj is exactly equal to Aj1, F1, plus Aj2, F2, plus up to Ajn, Fn. And that'll prove our claim, right? Because remember, the transpose of a matrix just swaps the roles of i and j in the entries. 
And so that's why I'm looking at this particular combination. Now, both sides of this, ex this equation that I wrote down are functionals. And so to show equality, um, we're just going to evaluate them at points. And since they're both linear, it's enough to check equality on a basis for V. So what does that mean? I'm going to evaluate the left-hand side and the right-hand side of this, this equation at VK, check for equality, and I'm going to do this for each K. K equals 1, 2, 3, up to N. What is the left-hand side evaluated at VK? So we're going to do T uh, transpose of GJ evaluated at VK. That's GJ of T of VK. And so that's GJ of the sum A1KW1 plus A2KW2 plus all the way up to AMKWM. But now GJ is a linear functional, so it's a linear function. And so this will be A1KGJW1 plus and so on up to AMKGJWM. But now remember that GJ is a coordinate function. So gj of wi is 1 if i equals j and 0 otherwise, right? So this is Kronecker delta. And so in all of those sums, the only one that survives is the ajk term. And so that tells you that t transpose gj evaluated at vk, so that's the left-hand side evaluated at vk, is the number a sub jk. Now we compute the right-hand side at VK, and so that's this functional evaluated at VK. But the, by definition, the sum evaluated at VK is just the pointwise sum. So we evaluate each of the functionals at VK. And now remember that the FIs are coordinate functions, and so FI VK is 1 if i equals k and 0 otherwise, right? Kronecker delta. And so then the only term that survives is a, j, k. And so the right-hand side evaluated at vk is also a, j, k. Since that agrees with the left-hand side for vk and k was just general, the result follows.